Hi, this is Dr. Karthik Raja, Assistant Professor, Department of Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics from Vinayak Mission Dental College. In today's lecture, we are going to see about model analysis. Model analysis, it is nothing but the study of dental cost, which help us to study about the occlusion and dentition in all three dimensions. Even in intraoral examination also, we can't see the lingual aspect of the dental art. But through these study models, we can have three dimensional view and using this we can analyze the degree and severity of mole occlusion. It is also used to decide the treatment plan for the particular patient. The objectives of the study model should be, it should be accurately reproduce the exact dental arch of the patient and the soft tissues should not be altered and the model should be well finished. All these lies based only on the impression. Next is advantages of the models that is, the, this is a three dimensional record for a particular patient in which we have, we can see the lingual aspect and it serves as a permanent record for the patient. It helps to motivate the patient by asking them to visualize, by making them to visualize the lingual aspect and all the three dimensional view of the patient so that they can analyze and understand their current situations. And they can be used to uh, comparison purpose that is uh, before pre and post deborn we can check whether the patient's treatment is, is well finished or not. Then it acts as a reminder for the patient also. In few cases, it serves as important record so that we can transfer the record from uh, one doctor. Say for example, if a patient is shifting from one town to other, so that we can send the records from one doctor to other. Next is uses of study models. This is assist and record the dental anatomy, intercuspation, arch form, curves of occlusion. That is curve of curve of speed, curve of monsoon, curve of Wilson, etc. And so it also used to measure the progress of treatment and used to uh, detect abnormalities like enlargement, distortion of the arch form and it is also used to calculate the total space analysis which we are going to see now. And it also serves as a purpose of studying treatment procedures and stabilities. Next is disadvantage. It is not applicable to all the other population. Usually these uh, analysis are done in the uh, foreign countries and for a particular specific population. So it might not be applicable to all the other population and the sexual dimorphism. Generally they are categorized in the, into the norm, norms, but they are not specific about males and females. In this they are not addressed about the skeletal mole relation and uh, it also difficult to achieve the corresponding mandibular dimension that is necessary for the balanced occlusion. That is uh, uh, most of the analysis are pertaining only to the maxillary arch, not ar about the mandibular arch. In such cases in it is diff very difficult to alter the arch form in the mandibular arch. It uh, does, uh, does not account, take into account the relationship of the teeth to the supporting bone. That is difficulty in increasing the mandibular dimension as I mentioned earlier. In today's lecture, we are going to see about the following uh, model analysis, uh, the, which can be broadly ca categorized into two, that is permanent dentition analysis and mixed dentition. In permanent, we are going to see about Pons analysis, Lindroth, Corcos, Ashley analysis, Bolton analysis, Caris and Arch perimeter analysis. Uh, in the first three Pons, Lindroth and Corcos analysis are done to evaluate whether the particular patient is needed of expansion or not. The Ashleyo is done to evaluate whether the expansion is possible or not. And the Bolton is the interrelationship between the maxillary and mandibular dentition. And caries and arch perimeter analysis is nothing but the tooth size arch length discrepancy. In the mixed analysis, we are going to see about Moyes mixed dentition analysis, Tanaka Johnson and radiographic methods. First, we are going to see about the permanent dentition analysis. Pons, he has the concept that there was a strong relationship between the incisor mesiodistal width and the premolar and molar diameter that is the transverse dimension. He measured the mesiodistal width of the all the incisors that is sum of the incisors that is uh, using the divider. Next he measured the premolar diameter and molar diameter that is measured premolar value. The measured premolar value was measured between the distal pit, distal pit of the first premolar to the distal pit of the first premolar on the contralateral side that this uh, represents the measured premolar value. Next is the measured molar value. Similar like premolar value, this is measured from the mesial pit of the first molar from one side to other that is co contralateral side. Then he came with the one formula that is the calculated premolar value that is sum of the incisors into 100 by 80. For calculated molar value, it is sum of the incisors into 100 by 64. He came with the inference that if the measured value is less than the calculated value, then the patient is in the need of expansion. That is, if the measured value is less, the patient needs expansion. If the measured value is more, there is no need for expansion. The drawbacks in this analysis that the maxillary incisors are the teeth which are more commonly missing. Mostly, the laterals will be missing. 
and the, again the morphological alteration is more prone in maxillary laterals that is peg lateral and this analysis does not take into account the skeletal malnutrition and it is solely done for the French population as I mentioned, mentioned earlier in the, these model analysis are done mainly for the uh, foreigners the particular ethnic groups not for the our population. Next is it is very difficult to achieve the corresponding mandibular dimension as I mentioned earlier that for balanced occlusion there should be a relation between the maxilla and mandible which is which most of the analysis are done pertaining to maxilla not on the mandible. Next is Lindroth it is exactly similar to Pons analysis instead of 80 in the calculated premolar value he has mentioned 85 that is all rest and all same as the uh, Pons. In Korkos analysis in additional to the analysis done by Lindroth he has added one more thing that is the measure the anteroposterior dimension that is anteroposterior distance from the measured premolar value to the incision that is the contact point between the two central incisor. This is mainly done to address the proclination of the incisor. This can be uh, evaluated by using this formula that is mandibular value is equal to maxillary value minus 2 mm that is pertaining to over z the 2 mm. So, say if the patient is having 62. 62 mm of uh, anteroposterior dimension from the measured premolar value in the maxilla then the mandible should be that minus 2 that is 60 means 60 minus 2 58. So, if the if the value is more in the upper arch means it simulates the proclination. Next is Ashley as I, as I mentioned earlier this is done to evaluate whether the expansion is possible or not. He he told that uh, he has a concept that uh, that the tooth crowding is mainly pertaining to the arch dimension in transverse direction that is uh, rather than arch length he, he has concentrated more on the arch width. In this he has taken the three values that one is total tooth material that is measuring the meso distal dimension of the all the tooth from first molar to first molar. Next he measured the premolar diameter that is from the buccal cusp tip of one premolar to the contralateral side buccal cusp tip of other molar other first premolar and third one is the premolar basal arch width this is measured at the canine fossa that is in few cases it, it might be difficult to measure the canine fossa locate the canine fossa in such cases we can evaluate by uh, measuring a distance of about 8 mm from the interdental papilla between the canine and the first premolar and measuring the premolar basal arch width using the divider. Next we can uh, assess the percentage that is premolar basal arch width percentage that is by premolar basal arch width into 100 by total tooth material. Next is inference if the premolar basal arch width is more than the premolar diameter then the basal arch is sufficient to make expansion ok. If it is not there it contraindicated for expansion and move teeth distally and extract some teeth that is the sum of the methods to gain space. Based on the percentage the mean value is 37 to 44 percent that is the borderline case in which uh, this can be go for expansion or extraction. If the value is less than 37 percentage it no need for extraction. First uh, the premolar basal arch width and the premolar diameter can be used to assess the whether the expansion is possible or not. Based on the premolar basal arch width percentage we can decide whether the patient is requiring extraction or not in which we have to remember just two values that is 37 percentage to 44 which is a borderline. Next is Bolton as I mentioned earlier that the Bolton analysis used to determine the relationship between the tooth material among maxillary and mandibular arch. In this there is two types first overall Bolton ratio and this is anterior Bolton ratio. For the overall they measure the meso distal diameter of the 12 maxillary teeth that is from first molar to first molar all the meso distal width are measured. Next for the sum of that is the anterior ratio they have measured sum of the incisors and canine that is from canine to canine. This is the formula which we have to remember just keep this mind that is 2 value for overall ratio it should be 91.3 for anterior ratio it is 77.2. The overall ratio is measured by the sum of meso distal width of man mandibular 12 into 100 by sum of the meso distal width of max ray 12. If the and for anterior ratio it is sum of the meso distal width of mandibular 6 into 100 by sum of the meso distal width of max ray 6. Next is inference if the ratio is more than the mean value that is if the overall ratio is more than 91.3 it indicates that is mandibular overall tooth material excess. It is similar like similar to anterior also if the overall value is more than 77.2 it indicates that there is a anterior mandibular excess based on this we can decide 
proximal stripping or extraction of lower incisor to make the bolt on normal because bolt on is mandatorily addressed for the proper uh, completion in overjet and overbite. Next is drawback as I mentioned the general drawback like it is pertain to the specific population and there is no sexual dimorphism. Next is arch perimeter analysis same as carry arch analysis when carried out in upper arch. Carries analysis that is as I mentioned earlier the these analysis are done to evaluate the tooth size and arch length discrepancy. In this using the brass wire they address the arch length measurement that is in the first image we can see that the arch length is measured from the mesial aspect of the first molar to the mesial aspect of the first molar on the contralateral side. Generally the, the arch wire that is the brass wire should follow the buccal cut strip and the incisal edges of the of the anteriors. In case of proclination it should pass along the cingulum of the anteriors. If it is retroclined the wire should pass above that is in front of the anteriors. Next we should measure the mesiodistal width of tooth all the tooth that is from premolar to premolar except the first molar that is from the only from the mesial aspect of the molar. Interpretation if the discrepancy that is tooth material minus arch length is between 0 to 2.5 this case is indicated for proximal stripping. If it is 2.5 to 5 mm, it indicates for extraction of second premolar. That is, the concept is that if the mesiodistal diameter of the first molar is bigger than the second molar, so the, the, if the discrepancy is less, that is 2.5 to 5 mm means we can extract second premolar. If it is more than 5 mm means we can extract first premolar. Next, we are coming to mixed dentition analysis. This is done to evaluate whether the space is sufficient for the succedaneous teeth after the exchange of deciduous canine and molars with the uh, permanent canine and permanent premolars. This can be evaluated by two methods one by assessing the mesiodistal diameter, diameter of the tooth using the radiographs of the particular region or by using assessing the erupted mesiodistal that is the mesiodistal width of the erupted tooth that is mainly incisors and evaluating estimating the amount of space required for the uh, succedaneous teeth in the arch length. First we are seeing about the Moes mixed dentition analysis. E as a concept that there is a strong correlation between the incisal mesiodistal diameter and the that is sum of the incisors and the erupting permanent canine and premolars. In this he has mentioned he has measured the mesiodistal width of the maxillary and mandibular incisors. Then he has evaluated the space left distal to the lateral incisor that is from distal of distal aspect of deciduous uh, permanent lateral incisor to mesial aspect of the first molar which has already erupted around age of 6 years. Then using this value as standard that is mesiodistal diameter of the incisors he has uh, developed one chart that is Moes chart in that we can check the for the particular sum of the incisors there should be a value that is which has estimated value for the succedaneous teeth. In that we can compare the measured value that is from lateral incisor to mesial aspect of molar and compare and evaluate whether we need a space or not. Next is Tanaka Johnson. Instead of using the Moyes chart, he has came up with one formula that is the sum of the mandibular incisor plus 11 by 2. It indicates the that is the predicted width of the succedaneous maxillary canine and premolars. And similar for mandibular, it is uh, sum of the mandibular incisor plus 10.5 by 2. So that using this uh, value as constant, we can check the uh, space for the succedaneous teeth and evaluate whether we need space or not. Next is radiographic method. This is done when few of the teeth has already erupted. As I say, for in one quadrant the tooth has erupted, and the other quadrant the say. In the first quadrant, the tooth has erupted, and the second quadrant, it has not erupted. Based on the values of erupted teeth, we can come with conclusion that whether we need a space maintainer or we have to gain space for the impacted teeth. This can be evaluated by using this formula. First, unerupted tooth width by unerupted tooth width in X ray is equal to erupted tooth width in cast by erupted tooth width in X ray. That is, tooth width can be measured from cast also. By also using the radiograph, we can measure. The, using this formula we came up with that the unerupted tooth width is equal to erupted tooth width in the cast that is nothing but the erupted tooth in the cast of the patient that is sum of the incisors premolars like that into unerupted tooth width which can be evaluated only from x-rays by erupted tooth width in x-rays. Through this we can evaluate the required space for the 
to to erupt into the dental arch and thank you for listening my lecture i hope this add to some knowledge to your career thank you